If you ever feel like, oh, I just keep failing. Is Jesus really there for me the way people say he is? Does Jesus really love me and really forgive me the way that people say he does? This is for you. Hey, what's up? It's HJ, and I am really excited to get into the scripture with you guys. Um, if you don't know who I am, my name's Hillary Jane. I'm a Christian pop and hip hop artist. I sing, I rap, but I also love to like look at the word of God, talk about godly living, relationships, how do we honor the Lord with our life. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're already subscribed, don't forget to hit the bell. Let's get into this. My little children. First off, he's talking to believers, but he's not only talking to believers, but he's being very effective affectionate with them. So this is coming from a place of like gentleness, kindness, affection. Um, and you'll see that more as we read it. I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. So the whole purpose of this is to encourage a believer, encourage affectionately not to sin. So if you feel like you're struggling with sin, this is probably a really good place for you. Or if you have a friend that you can encourage if they're struggling with sin, this is probably really good for them too. But if anyone does sin, again, the fact that he's using the word if is super affectionate and kind because it's not if we sin, it's when we sin. We will sin. Um, so he's still like being kind in his words. We have an advocate with the Father. I love that he's saying we. He's coming down on their level. He may be an apostle, but he's a human. And it's not like when you sin, it's like whenever we sin. Like we may be believers, but on this side of eternity, this is something we're all going to struggle with. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. There is so much going on in those like seven words. What is an advocate? Okay, so an advocate is somebody like in the court of law, is somebody who defends a cause or a person. So you could say defender. We have a defender with the Father, so God the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. So the advocate, the defender, when talking to the Father about our sin is Jesus Christ. I love that he puts in the righteous. This is so important. No other God or other person or other good, willing situation can defend our sin against God except for Jesus Christ the righteous. He's the only one. He's the only perfect, spotless, blameless, never sinned, righteous, truly God, truly man, son of God that can be our defender. He, meaning Jesus Christ, is the propitiation for our sins. What this means is he um, satisfies the wrath of God because every sinner has to have a just punishment against their sin or God wouldn't be just, right? So what is that? It's the wrath of God abiding on somebody, but Jesus comes in and whenever he pays the debt of our sin, when he spills his blood, whenever we are saved and we have that salvation, he's the propitiation, meaning he pays the debt. So we owe a debt because of sin, but Jesus pays for it. So we'll say pays the debt. And not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. And just like whenever you look at um, John 3, 16, it says, so for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. He's talking about Jesus dying for the world, um, not just the Jews, because God's people were the Jews in the Old Testament. But now because of Christ dying, anyone can be saved and God is coming to redeem all types of people, black, white, yellow, purple, um, Indian, like Chinese, eight, like everybody, like Jesus will be saving people from all over the whole world. So that is what that means. The sins of the whole world. This is not just for Jewish God's people. This is now opened up that anybody can have salvation and God is wanting for all types of people to be in his kingdom. And by this, we know that we have come to know him by what we're about to find out. If we keep his commandments, I'm going to switch my colors real quick. So we can for sure know that we know God. If we keep his commandments, we've come to know him. If we keep his commandments for whoever says, I know him but does not keep his commandments is a liar. Very strong words here. 
and the truth is not in him. I just want to pause for a second. I love how he comes in kind. My children, we have an advocate if you sin. These kind words, he's softening the blow of this truth that is about to be hit with all realness. If you say that you love God, but you do not follow God, you li- you're a liar and you do not have the truth inside of you. And I just want to add this as a side note for people who say that you always have to be super caressing with your words and soft and you can't just deliver the truth to people right here. This is like a straight up deliver delivery that he's giving. You're a liar. The truth's not in you. If you say you know God, but you don't keep his commandments. And sometimes we can't talk to people like that, but we need to also have this, how he first approached it with that gentleness and that kindness. But so something's happening here. Whoever keeps his word in him, truly the love of God is perfected. So what he's saying here is knowing him and loving him are the same thing. So you say you know him, and if you do, then you really do love him. So to know God is to love God. You can't just know him here. You have to know him here. You have to love him um, for who he is and what he says. And one of the ways we prove that we love him is by keeping his commandments. This is the proof of love. By this, what is this? Keeping his commandments, this, the proof of love. We believers may know that we are in him. This is further proof, like everything I just said, we just know that we're in him. We know that we love him when we're keeping his commandments. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk. Walk, this is like living. This isn't just walk. It's every day taking up your cross, living your life in the same way in which he walked, in the same way which he lived. So you say you love Christ, act like it, but over here, if anyone does sin. So in this living out and walking and keeping God's commandments, we're going to struggle, we're going to sin, We are going to fail. But if you are in Christ the righteous, if you are in Christ the righteous, you have a propitiation for your sins. Your sins are paid for. Your debt is paid. Continue to walk in Christ. Continue to prove that you love God by saying, you know what, I failed, but I'm, I, God forgive me. I want to continue to walk for you. I want to continue to live for you. I want to continue to keep your commandments because the love of God is being perfected in me. We're going to fail, but we have an advocate, Jesus Christ, who is always on our behalf, pointing out that we are made whole in Christ and we're good. And if you're in Christ, you're good. God's going to love you forever. Um, You have a defender. Be encouraged with that.